Packages Between Us, your mom's favorite resource for diet tips that don't work. So, uh, all diet tips. All diet tips. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look at your nails. Do you like them? Whoa, that's so cool. Thank you, my mom hates them. Why? She thinks they're bad, but I think they're really cool. What are you talking about? These are my birthday nails. What are you talking about? Those are awesome. Right? Okay, thank you, because I got really sad and I thought, oh no, maybe they're really bad, but I think they're really cool. <laughs> Why would that be bad at all? Yeah, because as you're watching this, June 20th, it's my birthday. Yes. I got these in preparation for it. Yeah. What would what, what would the problem be with them? I don't know. She think, I think she thinks they're ugly. But okay. I think they're really cool. It's interesting because that's like so minor in terms of what someone could do with their nails. Like it's like funky <laughs> for you, but right. it's not like, and she's like, ugh, gross. Well, no, I, I, sh I made her have a comment. I went, birthday nails. And she went, oh. <laughs> So this week, I wanted to talk about something I've been thinking about, which is, like, what is me and what is my OCD? And this has actually been catalog, ca catalyst, the catalyst. The catalyst. This, was actually a comment on the YouTube channel. Oh, what did it say? I was talking about how I always worry when I leave the dogs that they'll, like, die when I'm gone and that, like, it's, like, animal abuse to leave them and stuff. Oh, my God. And I thought that was just, like, me being me. But then someone was like, oh, that sounds like a form of harm OCD. Oh, that's interesting. And I personally am not someone that's ever identified as having harm OCD. Like, mm. I don't really, like... You know, harm OCD is like a fear that you're going to accidentally hurt yourself or, or someone else. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Not like by accident, but like because you pick up a knife and like kill them. Like you'll come sure. over, like these urges will take over and you'll like hurt people in your life. Yeah. Um, and so I've always like since day one of having sugar, whenever I leave her alone, I worry she's going to die. Or like. And it'll some, be like your fault. And it'll fault. be my fault. Oh my God. So like. A big, a big reassurance thing that I have is like I always, as we're leaving the house, I always say to John, I go, or "Do you think the dogs will be okay?" <laughs> and it's just like it's so funny because I've had OCD since I was four years old, right? Yeah. So we're coming up on thirty-one years. Yeah. And I have studied psychology. I yeah. have a master's in it. I talk about it all the time. I am thinking about it all the time. I'm interviewing people all the time, and I still like don't totally even understand how my own OCD impacts my life. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Isn't that wild? And then it's like, do I want to like over diagnose all of my behaviors in that way? Right. Or is it just like, do, do, like, do I need, how important is it for me to like see that out? You know? Yeah. Well, it's hard because I remember we had, um, Paige Lael on, uh, on the podcast. She's talking about autism and um, her book is called uh, But Everybody Feels That Way or something, or mm -hmm. But Everybody Does That. Forgive me, Paige. And I was like, yeah, like the, it's this um, dismissive thing that I think happens sometimes where someone will explain like a symptom and then someone will be like, yeah, but everybody does that or everybody thinks that. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, I can see why you would be reluctant to like look into or to do things, especially with OCD, wherever you think you're lying all the time mm -hmm. to be like, look into something and then be like, Oh, that's what that is. And then what? Spend another week thinking, no, I don't really have that. Right. <laughs> you know, like, because the society isn't also set up to be like, yeah, and maybe that's something you should look into. Society's like, you're fine. You know what I mean? Well, also, like, there's this theory that, like, the things that your OCD attaches to are things that you care about, but then I'm mm. like, oh, so my values are just being super clean? No, 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 <laughs> because guys, you, you value, I, I think, I think you, I think it's, like, deeper than that. I think it's valuing, like, control, Well, you know? I don't know, like, because then I think about all these people that, like, it's terrible, but they're so worried that they're, like, harming their loved ones. And I'm like, oh, that shows that they really care about other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mine is like, oh, God, I can't possibly be contaminated. But contaminate, but that has to do with, I think, like, if I may be so bold, uh, loss of control as a child from getting OCD. So then slowly crawling your way back to some form of control, which is let me control germs, which is also fruitless. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. That's what I think. It's funny watching couples therapy on Showtime. Like there are a lot of psychoanalysts there who are very like kind of like that Freudian background. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. everything links back to childhood and all this stuff. Yeah. It's sometimes because now in the newer seasons they like it's not just her clinical advisor. It's like also a group of therapists. And yeah. sometimes I got to say these theories that they're pulling out of their butts about yeah. like why people are. I'm like yeah. maybe. But <laughs> 
Yeah. Like a bit of a stretch. I agree. I think I think you can come like wait, what's an example? Uh, just like, you know, everything is a reenactment of childhood mm-hmm. and everything is like some of the stuff I literally I can't even follow. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, they're yeah, implying. Yeah. Um and John and I are like, what? <laughs> yeah. But so I don't know. I mean so another big one I've been questioning is like uh, that I have for a bit is like how I feel the need to be really polite to people, uh huh, uh huh, and like that I'm like very worried that I'm hurting people's feelings, uh huh. And again, never, never connected that to OCD. Oh yeah, like that was me just more like an anxious like behavioral trait because I often like fight against the idea that I'm a people pleaser because I yeah. don't really think that I am. Yeah, because I don't really care if people dislike me. Yeah, that I am utterly consumed with if I. If I've hurt another person. Right, right, Or if right. another person thinks I'm rude, not because it means that they won't like me, but because I might have hurt them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, is that harm OCD? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's also, again, I think it also comes back to control because germs and how other people feel are two things you can't control. So you might have no, no, I, like, no intention of hurting someone at all. And, and then it could accidentally hurt them because you just didn't, like, whatever it is, that that's unavoidable. That mm-hmm. happens whether the person is justified, whether they're not justified, whether, you know, like, that that's going to happen no matter what, all the time, always, till we die. But I think it's something where you're like, oh my god, I can't control not what this other person thinks of me, but I can't control if this person gets hurt. Yeah, like sometimes- No matter what you do. Well, I tried very hard to be, to, to, to make it so that it is a pleasant exchange. Yeah, but we're human. Like, you never know. No, you I still really, mess up. Yeah. Sometimes I get testy, let me tell you. Yeah, but, but like, it'll know. be like, I get, I, so, I get, feel so guilty when I have to, like, hang up the phone with somebody. Mm-hmm. I think we mm-hmm. talked about that. Mm-hmm. Or, like, I really worry that the way that I got off the phone was rude and that mm-hmm. I made them feel like I didn't care or value. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll be like, was that okay? Do you think, do you think that was okay? <laughs> You know what's interesting is that I um, I have surrounded myself in my life a lot of times with people for whom I think this is fine and they are like, this is the rudest fucking thing ever and it's not. Like, it's just like, mm. like, let's say for example, there's someone in my life who I, you know, who gets mad at me once a month for something that is just not like a thing Mm -hmm. so I could spend this is what makes me anxious is I spend my all my time thinking uh okay I've got it handled I I haven't done anything this month to anger this person Mm -hmm. and then it'll be something I didn't even think about yeah and my ex was that way too Mm -hmm. and I think I'm just not to tell you that the showtime people are correct but I think there's a reason why I'm like let me attach myself to people who are just constantly chaotically throwing out things I may have done wrong even when I'm trying my hardest not to. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, because I, I definitely have always thought of my OCD as something separate from me. Yeah. But then to, like, realize that it's, like, actually maybe not just contamination-based and that, like... No, and I but- have a really hard time with, like... So I try to exercise five days a week mm-hmm. for, like, my mental health and my my um, hypermobility and strength training and mm-hmm. stuff. And... um. And some days I'll be like, I'm not going to work out today. Mm -hmm. And then I just become so uncomfortable with the fact that I haven't worked out today. Then, like, John will find me in the gym and he'll be like, what are you doing? Yep, (laughs) yeah. And it's like on weekends when I don't work out, I don't feel that sense of dread. I don't feel that sense of guilt of, like, or, like, restlessness within my body because, like, on the weekends I don't work out. Right, right. But you've made this arbitrary thing in your mind. I made this arbitrary thing in my mind and that it is, like, so difficult for me not to do it even though I, I, even when I, like, don't want to do it. Well, also when you were sick and we had the live stream and you were like, I'll just stay for a little. Then you stayed for half of it. And then you were, and then you were like, John says I can't work today. And you were upset about it. (laughs) But that's a big thing, right? Because it was a stomach issue. And like, yes, there were painful times, but there were times where I also felt fine. So then my brain goes, but I'm fine. I'm not in pain right now. I was in pain 10 minutes ago. God. (laughs) Yeah, I know, but that you got to get over that, especially because you do a lot of stuff. Even though you maybe this is also OCD, you constantly are like, "I'm not ever doing anything. I'm actually not ever doing anything." 
<laughs> I'm like, that's, oh, maybe that's OCD too. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? You'll be like, nothing's happening. And I'll be like, nothing's, you have three books. What are you talking about? Nothing's happening. So my, I think my biggest, one of my biggest character flaws is being so impatient. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, yeah. can I blame that on my OCD? Probably not, but it'd be nice if I could. <laughs> I've decided that my nails are my most creative expression. Yeah, so, so why I dress not? simply, but I have fun nails. Yeah. And I kind of want to get more tattoos. <gasps> me too, me too, me too. Yeah, I, wanna, I think I can fit one here and one here. Yes, me too, me too. I want to do leg tattoos now. Now that, I don't know why, but I think I never wanted that. And now as a guy, I'm like, what if I got leg tattoos? Yeah, like, that's well, a lot of guys have leg hot. tattoos. It's hot when they do. I'll think someone is not that attractive, and then they have a leg sleeve, and I'm like, oh, What's up? Hey. I don't know why. But I want I love, thigh tattoos. I love neck tattoos. Right? Yeah. Oh my god, for my movie, uh, we put we covered one of the actors in tattoos and he's like not a I would not describe him as edgy. Um, but the character he's playing is edgy. And so we covered him in tattoos and he was like, My wife is thrilled. <laughs>